I wasn't going to buy this, but this changed my mind. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That's right, uh, a Fender on a Monday? What's going on here? My editor of four years had to take medical leave. So everybody, wish Brian a get well soon. So I'm training some new editors, so it's just me right now. We'll have some fun together. But I thought I would pick up the 70s Ventera 2 Stratocaster to review and document. But this is part of Fender's 70th anniversary of the Stratocaster, so 2024 through 1954. However, what's fun about this 70th anniversary is it's 70s inspired, and it's in the Antigua color. It's one of my favorites. Like, it's one of those divisive finishes where <laughs> you either like it or you don't. Personally, the reissue ones, I feel they get the border way too dark. But let's do a little bit of history on the Antigua finish in case this is your first time seeing it. So as far as I'm aware, it's around 1967 when Fender starts to use this on the Coronado model. Which is kind of like a ES-335 looking thing, but within Fender's branding. But I've always found those things so fascinating because they also had a Wildwood version where they would actually inject the trees with dye and they would grow and each one would just be unique. I would love one of those for my collection and I don't really collect Fenders. But environmental activists were saying, hey, don't do that to the trees. So some of them got painted over, including in the Antigua finish. Now, as far as when you start to see Stratocasters and Telecasters in the finish, it's a little bit later, around 1977-ish. But my very first Fender Stratocaster was actually one very similar to this, except for it had the maple fretboard that someone dumbly enough sanded the lacquer off the fretboard. But if you go back, that's actually the first public video currently available on the channel. For that, it was Super Monkey Ball 2 trick shots and high school Spanish cooking videos. Well, some people <laughs> think this looks like mashed up peas, baby poop, you know, whatever you want to say. To me, it reminds me of a Wild West cowboy. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. And excuse me while I take this ugly sticker off. Because I've always been enamored by the fact that these have a matching painted pick guard. Because as far as I'm aware, it's one of the few models that Fender actually did that for in the 70s. But this is a 70s inspired Ventera 2 series guitar. So that means this is made in Mexico and they're being offered at $1,500 US. Now, if you look at what the other Ventera 2 Stratocasters sell for, it's significantly less at $1,150. So, I mean, what's going on here? Well, it's limited edition. They've changed up the pickups very slightly. Things like the pick guard being a different color also raise a little bit to your costs. Is it worth it? I guess I'll try to help you decide that. I mean, it's really not that much more for a vintage original. People might ask crazy prices on those, but what they sell for is usually a little bit different. As far as the specs go, it is a lot of fun. You've got the larger Fender style headstock, the bullet truss rod dual string trees. I was fishing around for a new Guitar Day purchaser of this one and nobody showed up, but this was the spec that made me decide, all right, I'll buy it, review it, and then I'll just sell it on my website. It's a hardtail. So when I was buying my first Stratocaster, once again, I didn't realize that a hardtail was an option. I just figured all Stratocasters have tremolos. I didn't even know to look at the back and not see the big cavity route. But yeah, sure enough, it's a string through Stratocaster. Some guys say, hey, that gives you a better sustain. You don't have any of those springs and all that. To which I guess I can kind of see the point there. It might sound significantly different. And since I don't use a trem system, I don't really care. So that's a win in my book and it makes it different. But I'm digging this 70s inspired case. It's that nice orange material inside our case compartment. Let's see what we're rocking. Oh, I was not expecting an ashtray cover for the bridge because it's actually one of their more modern style looking ones with the extra jutting part right there. But it appears they made a custom one just for that. That's interesting. I like that. We've got some case keys. Looks like a fender sticker. Some truss rod wrenches. The sticker I took off our pick guard. With some sign offs. And a rather strange COA. What went on here? Isn't that supposed to be printed on? Not written on? Not sure what's going on there. But you saw me unbox it. That's how it came from Musician's Friend. And then of course fender lessons. Silk packets. Let's throw this one onto the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs, and then we'll get to a playing sample. Inside our Antigua friend, I noticed something that I did not like at all while taking this apart. Take a look at this pick guard. You see this area? Does anybody else think that looks really ugly? Like, why? 
the originals, they just shaded in that entire area. But that aside, I was curious, was the pick guard actually painted? So I popped one of the knobs off to do a little bit of fine sanding to find out. Because on some vintage originals, you can actually see where they wear down to the black layer, because the paint layer was relatively thin. But after doing some sanding, I honestly don't think you will ever wear through this pick guard. I had to break out my Dremel tool just to get down to the black layer a little bit right there. So there is a glossy clear coat over top of all this. And if you want proof, there's actually a air pocket bubble right here on the edge of the pick guard. So what I'm saying is don't expect to relic slash age this one without actually really digging deep. You're not just going to take off the light paint layer. And if you're worried I damaged the guitar, no, look, even just with the nut on, you can barely see I did anything, let alone with your knob actually on it. But let's dig into the inside. I was surprised not to see any shielding paint in the cavities. You just get to see this awesome alder body. I like the wood grain, but we can see at least one seam line right here. However, looking right here, you can see another. So it seems this piece might only be that thick. So maybe it's like a four or five piece body. But we do have a little barcode right there with an additional little route right there for your wires. And then we can also take a peek inside our output jack plate. What on earth is that? When I first touched it, I thought it was like a spider egg. Looks like some sort of a solder blob. I'll take that out. But now with the interior of our electronics. So there we can see our barcode with all our good readings. And our last 70th anniversary Amethyst Stratocaster, I really love the 70th anniversary pickups. I thought they sounded really good. These pickups are oddly called 70th anniversary 70s single coil vintage style pickups. So we'll have to see if that's any better. I don't think I've reviewed a Ventera 2, so I might not be the best guy to ask. But I can at least show you what the backside of this particular one looks like. You know, it looks like we're rocking 250k CTS pots in all of our positions. And here's a look at our toggle switch. And in case you missed it, we've got the shielding on the back of this. I wish Fender would start to sell these separately, because I could see some guys wanting to restore their vintage ones with one that doesn't have wear. Or maybe somebody just wants to throw an Antigua guard on a different guitar. But the whole black top pickups, they, they work well with this finish in my opinion. But here's a peek at that hardtail bridge. It has six individual adjustable saddles. As far as the body goes, I didn't notice anything too crazy here on the top, but we can appreciate the Antigua finish for what it is. As is common on these reissues, the border is very dark. But again, this is a multi-piece alder body, but we can move on to our traditional maple neck with a rosewood fretboard. Full disclosure, this did not come to me with such shiny frets. I decided to polish those and condition our fretboard. It was the typical dry brand new guitar when I had first gotten it, as you saw in the unboxing segment. And the frets, I mean, they weren't terrible, but I knew that there was so much more to them underneath all that gunk. But we have a synthetic bone nut that measures 1.65 inches and 2.04 by the 12. First fret neck depth is 0.9, and by the 12th, about 0.92. There's a visual for that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret, just nice and rounded. I was genuinely surprised by how thick the neck is. It's a U-shape, so it fills out your hand, but without having tons of shoulder. And the last time I had an Antigua Strat was like 11 years ago, so <laughs> I'm not necessarily the best gauge on how this compares to like the late 70s ones. But it's definitely a bit bigger than I remember, but that's honestly a good thing, in my opinion. We've got one of those tiny fretboards on this. Not even big enough to sink your side marker inlays into. And it's just your regular dot inlays. I think the website said they were 7 millimeters or something like that. And as far as tooling marks, everything looked okay on the fretboard. But at the end of the board, if you get it in the light just right, you can see that there's like a tooling right there. And maybe another small one or two right there. So not perfect in that aspect. But from a couple feet away, you're not really going to notice that. But something else I noticed is actually on the headstock. A ding straight out of the factory right there. That one was kind of a bummer. It might have happened during the installation of our truss rod right here. They call these bullet truss rods. They actually stick out a little bit further. They're not recessed into the guitar. And they use an Allen wrench. And we get our whole double string tree and the vintage poke down, wrap it around style tuners. But this is another nice touch. Not only do you have the big headstock, but they reissued the 70s style serial number on the top of the headstock right here. So this one is SM240181. Now we can move on to the backside. You've got the continuation of your Antigua finish. And as we were talking earlier, it is a string through Stratocaster with no trim system at all. So you get a little bit more wood in here. 
which just makes this one a little bit more unique from other Stratocasters, although typically hardtails sell for a little bit less because most people want the very traditional specs, but I'm one of those weirdos that likes them like this. But you've got a strap button down here, one at the top, and we do have a 70th anniversary three screw neck plate. So that is a special one for this, and if you're wondering why it's not four, that's just because that's how they did it in the 70s. Now unfortunately, I do have a neck pocket crack. Now it's strictly cosmetic, 100,000% just in the finish, but yeah, I thought I'd mention it. Here's a look at the other side. So if you're interested in being the next owner of this one, I would say definitely know about those. The ding right here, and some minor marks at the end of the fretboard and that there's a troggly surprise hidden underneath that knob. But they decided to go ahead and put the skunk stripe on here, which if you don't know why Fender does that, it's so they can put the truss rod in the guitar. However, when they actually put a fretboard on the guitar, they don't have to do that, because they can just inlay it from the top. It just kind of depends on what era specs they're trying to reissue. But check that out, 70s style F-stamp tuners. You even have the kind of shawler looking peg heads. I was impressed to see this. Now in stock photos, I did not see that made in Mexico thing. I wasn't actually sure where this was made at at first. And since I didn't see that on the front of the headstock, I was like, oh no, nah, they're not trying to hide that, are they? <laughs> but honestly, I would rather actually just see it in the title. Made in Mexico, Vintera 2. I think it would be a lot more helpful for people to understand. Because when I bought my first Taylor, I didn't even realize it was Mexican made. I thought I was buying a USA guitar. Not that it matters, it's just nice to know. 70s Stratocasters can be known for being super heavy, like 9, 10 pounds plus. This one relieves your back a little bit at 7 pounds, 11.7 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how these 70th anniversary 70s single coils sound. <laughs> First impressions, nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, it sounds good, but nothing really stood out to me. Let's try some distortion now.
go. The 70th anniversary Ventera 2 limited edition antique with Stratocasters. Did it blow me away? No, not really. But it is a nice tribute to the old 70s Antigua Stratocasters. If you were looking for a slightly modernized take, I mean, it's still got the 21 frets. It's got the regular seven and a quarter inch vintage style fretboard radius, 25 and a half inch scale length. So it's not like they modernized it in that aspect. It's just, it's a much lighter guitar. And honestly, I do really enjoy this neck. I would say that's my favorite thing about this guitar outside of the finish is the way the neck feels. It's full without being too much. I didn't think the pickups sounded bad, but they weren't like, whoa, either. Could you upgrade the pickups one day to like some custom shop stuff if you really wanted to? Sure. So I hope this review helps you make an informed decision whether one of these is right for you or not. If you're interested in being the next owner of my little demo review piece here, you can find that for sale on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. And if not, hey, we'll catch you guys tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, you might like the time when I custom ordered from the mod collection an Antigua Telly with an awesome channel bound neck. <laughs>